Hello plant people, how are you guys doing today? If you're new around here, my name's Ashley and I'm a soil scientist. On this channel, I like to take that science and apply it to all things plants. So if you like the sounds of that, be sure to hit that subscribe button, give this video a thumbs up, and let me know in the comments below if you have calytheas, which ones you have, how many you have. I do enjoy these plants quite a bit. Um, this video was completely spurred by a question that a viewer sent in about a stromanthi trio star and why the leaves were cupping and you were getting brown edges. So we're going to be going through Calathea Care Guide start to finish using all the science possible with these guys. Um, as always, this is a science video. It's not going to be a, a short, sweet how to water and how to propagate and how to have fun with the plant. It's, it's hardcore science. So if you're not into that, then this whole channel's probably not for you. But if you are here for that and you're a plant nerd, be sure to comment below, let me know. Give me, give me the emoji with the, the smiley glasses or the scientist holding the beaker bottle so we can connect as humans that are nerdy about plants. So where do these guys come from? Well, they come from jungles. They love humidity and that is usually the issue when it comes to these plants. They have a very unique adaptation to them uh, that I personally love and it's this very unique joint system. It's a joint between the actual stem and the leaf itself that allows the plant to dance and move. This is so unique to this one plant. I love it. I love their dances. I love their, their moves that they got. And that's actually what allows them to be able to do that dance is that unique joint right at the stem leaf area. What causes the rolling up in the browning? Well, typically speaking, it is humidity or lack thereof. These guys are salt sensitive, so do not bottom water. Watch my bottom watering video how to not do it or how to do it properly if you are doing it. They don't like salt buildup, so try to flush the soil as often as possible. Don't heavily fertilize. For fertilizing for these guys, I actually use fish tank water more so than anything. Otherwise, I would probably just top dress with like a compost or a manure rather than a fertilizer. A fertilizer is just gonna exasperate the issue further when it comes to browning. You can also use distilled water. It'll help pretty remarkably as well to keep those brown edges at bay. A really good example of a Calathea that I bought that has a salt issue is actually this one right here. I'll just grab him for you. So he, this is a salt issue. This isn't a humidity issue. I'll show you what a humidity issue looks like here shortly, but this is purely salt. So you can actually physically see the salt buildup on the surface of this pot. And so he was in the grocery store in this nursery pot inside of a cover pot. Um, I didn't repot him, obviously. Uh, and I'm, I'm really confident that this is actually a salt issue more so than a humidity issue, mostly because the browning effect that I'm getting is an all over. It's not just on the edges, it's in the middle and it's showing up as a major nutrient deficiency. So this is like even just this right here. This is definitely a salt issue. It is not a humidity issue. So I am going to be repotting this guy. That is why he's out right now. He has way too much salt in his system and we need to take care of it. So that is what that looks like. You can physically see the salt build up on the outside. You can see the massive amount of browning that's happening. And that is from using either a fertilizer or a tap water that has much too much salt in it. So the other issue with these guys is humidity. And we're gonna get into the science of humidity and why they they like humidity and what happens when they don't have it. So this is a super beautiful medallion, um, Calathea, and uh, he doesn't have enough humidity. Despite being in a room that's at 60% humidity with grow lights, a fish tank, it's just, they just really like humidity way too much. So this is lack of humidity. These slightly brown edges, ah, that's 
right there that could be a bit of salt buildup to you salt buildup issue but this mostly is due to humidity and we'll get into exactly why that is and how to prevent this um, and kind of what humidity these guys like so yeah it is a bit of salt too I haven't I haven't repotted this one in forever either so that's more so what humidity looks like this guy he's huge he's got hugely so like these leaves are like the size of my hands almost um again he doesn't have so he's watered with fish tank water and he's kept in this room at 60 percent humidity and you can tell because he doesn't have any brown leaves um he doesn't have any crisp edges none of that stuff so you can definitely tell that he is a happy plant and then the last one this is my red maranta he is very similar to this lemon lime very similar slightly different this one actually fun fact is grown under a less intense grow light than this one is and you can tell by the internodes so you see how far the distance is for the internodes on this one compared to the internodes on that one yeah that's a miracle of grow lights baby so this guy these lower leaves are from the greenhouse actually so these ones I would say it's probably salt that's well it is salt build up um, because my newer leaves since I've started flushing the soil and since I've watered with my fish tank water rather than tap water you can already notice it way less brown way less brown um, to no brown actually on some of these this one leaf's gonna be freaking huge I'm super excited but I do I love these plants they're very very pretty I actually bought my sister one for her birthday. Let's get into the science of humidity, how it works, how we properly increase it, whether or not spritzing works or whether or not pebble trays work, all that fun stuff. So humidity is actually a measure of the volume or the percentage of water in the air. There's two different kinds of humidity. There's absolute and there is relative. Absolute is a literal mass of water that is contained within the air itself and relative is a percentage measurement of how much water is physically in the air. However, it is based on temperature and pressure. So the reason why all your stromanthes, your calatheas, your marantas, like all these plants that love humidity are taking a massive pitfall dive during the winter is because colder temperatures hold less humidity and therefore plants who love humidity are going to go downhill very quick. So when you run a humidifier in your home, say you have it set on blast, like absolute 100% all the time, go, go, go. And then you notice day to day that your humidity is up, down, up, down, it actually has to do with the not only the temperature within your home, but actually the outside pressure as well. So as the atmosphere around us changes, things that we have literally no control over us change, we ultimately will have a humidity percentage change. So when um, someone tells you, oh, just set your humidifier at this in a room of this size and it'll be fine. If the person's in Florida, it's going to be a much different story than someone who's in Saskatoon. Um, and also <laughs> beyond that, the person in Toronto is going to have different weather than the person that maybe lives in Oakville. And so therefore, just even that temperature change of, you know, a couple kilometers or a few kilometers, that's overall, it's going to affect the percentage of humidity that's in the atmosphere. So. Unfortunately, there's no way of controlling this. It's kind of mother nature, which is what makes Calatheas, Marantas, Triostars, Germanthes so frustrating to keep in colder climates in Canada, especially because it's a nonstop fight when it comes to keeping the humidity up in our homes in the winter. So why does this matter? Why does it matter that we have high humidity in our house for our plants? And why do some plants like humidity that's higher compared to others? Let's let's dive into the science. So all plants rely on a process called evapotranspiration. This essentially means that the stomata open, which then releases water 
just as a byproduct of the plant trying to capture CO2 for photosynthesis. Because this happens, when the plant transpires water out through its stomata, it acts as a straw. So think of the air, the sun, the heat as the human, and then think of the leaf, the, the entry to the stomata, the leaf, the stem, the roots as a twisty, bendy straw of sorts. Think of the soil as the cup and then the excess water that is in the soil solution. Think of that as the milkshake, <laughs> if that makes any sense. So as the water is extruded through the stomata, through respiration, transpiration, it causes a pressure in the plant, which basically draws the water that's available in the soil up through the roots back into the plant. So it's a passive system. It's not an active system. The plant doesn't have to think about it. It's completely manufactured off of natural pressures within the plant and particularly in the vascular system, which is the xylem and the phloem, which we've talked about when we're talking about Christmas tree water and all that fun stuff. Fun fact, there's actually a measurement of soil moisture that needs to be available for this pressure or this passive system to work. And it's based on something called the permanent wilting point. It's usually described as PWP. And if you've hit a permanent wilting point, that means that there could be moisture in your soil, but not enough moisture in your soil to allow for the uptake by the plant. There has to be a base level of moisture that is available for the plant to uptake based on the power or the draw that they have. So if the soil is better at capturing and holding moisture than the plant roots are at taking it out of the system, you've hit permanent wilting point. That means that the soil is gonna hold on to it before the plant gets it. So on a side fact, if you're ever wondering why your, your soil seems moist, but your plant is acting like it's underwater, it's because the soil is probably at a level where it's taking in all the water and the plant isn't able to get any based on the passive system that it has. So why are calatheas or any plant, certain plants for that matter, more sensitive to changes in the ambient moisture and why does it matter? It actually comes down to the rate in which the water is released. If the natural moisture in the air is high, the plant has a harder time respiring, so it actually isn't able to release as much water into the atmosphere because the atmosphere itself is at a high saturation. So if you've ever noticed in Mexico, if you've ever went that the humidity is really high, you're really hot and you can hardly sweat, well, this is something similar, but in the plant version. So because of where they're from in the jungle, they're not used to respiring on a high rate because the ambient moisture around it is so high, the air is less likely to just wick that moisture out of that stomata into its system. When it's in a dry air, there's lots of room in the air because the volume of water to air is much, much lower. So what ends up happening is the plant is quicker to wick away that water into its atmosphere. The issue with calatheas is that they have very thin leaves and anyone who owns these plants knows what I'm talking about. You can literally feel the veins, the, the vascular bundles basically in these plants, like they are paper thin feeling leaves. And because of that, they have really poor vascular structure meaning that the xylem and the phloem veins, for lack of a better term, are very, very cramped, very tight quarters. And everyone knows <laughs> the smaller the straw, the less water we're able to get out of it. Um, if you get the big gulp straws that are huge, we can take in as much water as we please, but the thinner the straw gets, so say if we were to drink water through a coffee stir stick, we're not going to get as much. And in some cases it may actually end up collapsing. So if our heat 
and our sun and our ambient moisture is low enough and the sun is high enough, our balance isn't there. So because water is evaporating from the plant faster than that plant is able to replenish it through the roots, what ends up happening is the vascular the vacuoles in the plant cell begin to collapse, the chloroplasts will begin to collapse, and the plant will slowly begin to brown. That's why it ends up at the tips of the leaves in particular rather than dead center. Does it make sense for it to happen dead center? It's going to happen at the farthest point away from the roots, the farthest point away from the base of the leaf. So you'll notice that they'll just slowly start collapsing all the way down. There's no way to fix this. It's just, that's the end of that leaf. We know we need to increase the humidity around the plant so that when the stone mat is open during the day while it's trying to respire and collect CO2, we don't want as much water loss to happen. We wanna saturate that air around it as much as possible. We have a few options. Option number one is obviously a humidifier. Number two is actually boiling water. If you're at home, um, you can always put a pot on the stove, let it boil, just keep on filling the pot up as water evaporates into the air. It will increase the humidity in your home itself. Um, the other option is a pebble tray. However, if you want to amplify this effect of the pe pebble tray and in actually increasing the humidity around the plant, you may want to think about putting a heater or some sort of mat heating underneath it um, you could even uh, put it on a register so long as your register is not blowing out ac and it's blowing out warm air you put it on that that's going to help increase the ambient moisture around it um, the other thing you can do is actually and this is going to go against everything that the internet ever is going to say to you but what you can do is you can mist i know people are super against that and they're like it doesn't work but if you mist during the day when the stomata on these plants, because they open their stomata during the day, not during the night, when they open their stomata, if you're able to increase that ambient moisture on the bottom of the leaf for when those stomata open, you will prevent water loss and therefore you will prevent the collapse of those vascular bundles going to the tips of your leaves. The biggest thing, is that if you choose to do this method and you miss the leaves, you have to put a plastic bag around the plant. Now, what can happen is if you're worried about disease or the leaves rotting, or if you forget about the bag on the plant, there is a likelihood that you will end up with mold or dead decaying matter mostly because moisture without airflow it's, it's not a good mix so do this in absolute desperate situations last resort situations like what i'm going to do with this one here he's going in a ziploc and he's getting misted and he's getting ziplocked for the next little bit um in hopes of saving him the good news is, is if you've completely killed your entire plant, which is what may end up happening to this guy, you can actually regrow them from nothing. And I'm gonna show you how. So, calatheas have this unique little structure on them that I'm gonna try to, oh God. So, can I get him turned around? So they have this unique little potato structure on them. Do you see that? yep that's very neat so this actually is a tuber and this is what they grow from so in the event that i completely kill off this plant somehow hopefully not um if he completely dies off what i'm going to do is i'm actually going to take those tubers out of the soil and i'm going to put them in uh, sphagnum moss and I'm just going to let them sit there. And eventually what will happen is I can grow a new plant from that. So not all is lost with a clathea. If you've completely killed the plant off, try to find those tubers. If it's mature in any way, shape or form, it will have some form of a tuber on it. There's probably quite a bit of energy actually stored in that tuber. The plant will come back. Clathea is naturally going to a dormancy as well. And if they do choose to go into a dormancy on you, what you can do again, is uh, simply just use those tubers to uh, make new plants.
I hope you guys found this helpful. If you did, be sure to give it a thumbs up, hit that subscribe button. Let me know if you think your Clathia is having a salt issue or a humidity issue and how you identified it. I want to thank you guys so much for watching. I will talk to you guys next time. Bye.